respected listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so many bounties that we cannot thank enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many, many bounties and blessings Allah has blessed us of which we are not deserving or worthy of. Still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, keeps giving us. Some of us are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us remember the giver of the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than enjoying the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of us are heedless, careless, neglectful of the blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But still, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran complains few times, وَقَلِيلٌ مِّنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ very few of my servants are ungrateful to me, are thankful to me. Very few of my servants are thankful to me. Even in this complaint, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows how much he loves the human beings, how much he loves the believers. He's saying, my servants, you know, when a mom or a dad complain, so it's a my child, you know, my beloved child. Allah is saying, my beloved servants, very few of them are thankful to me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the, the select few respected listeners. To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good times and in bad times. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call a group on the day of judgment. Allah will say, where are my thankful slaves? A group of thankful servants of Allah will stand up and Allah will order them to enter paradise. Allah will say, these are the thankful servants of mine who used to thank me in all circumstances, in good times or in bad times, one of the greatest blessings upon all of us respected listeners, one of the greatest blessings on all of us, which very few of us think about is, just the absence, just the absence of pain and sufferings in our lives and in the lives of our beloved ones. That itself is a great, great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The absence of chaos in our life. The absence of imbalance in our bodies. How many blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can we count? وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly challenges in the Quran. You can bring on the most powerful computer on the planet Earth and start counting the blessings, the number, start numbering the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not be able to number them. You will not be able to count them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes about a person in Bani Israel who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 500 years, non-stop. Just eating, Allah would provide him food and water. He would live in the mountains and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 500 years. People used to have long lives in the ancient times. And when he died, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels to make him enter paradise with my mercy. Let him enter paradise with my mercy. The person says, oh Allah, but what about my worship? My worship of 500 years, oh Allah. Am I not entering paradise because of that? Of course, the worship attract the mercy of Allah. He says, what about my worship, oh Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, make him enter paradise with my mercy. 
But what about my worship of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you want to count the worship for the favors I had done to your life in this world? Allah tells the angels to take his two eyes out. An equivalent to the worship of 500 years. Then he realizes that it is the mercy of Allah that we all are blessed with every bounty Allah has given us. This blessing of eyes, respected listeners. Allah has given us to see good things, to appreciate Allah Azza wa Jal, to recognize Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Not to use the eyes in disobedience which would displease Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Because the glance of an eye, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the glance of an eye is a poisonous arrow of shaitan and shaitan never misses with it. Shaitan never misses it with it. That is why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person who controls his gaze or her gaze, Allah will make him or her taste the sweetness of Iman, the sweetness of worship, the sweetness of dua, the sweetness of dhikr, the sweetness of reciting Quran, the sweetness of akhlaq, of character, conduct, good manners. Allah will bless the sweetness of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with long winter nights now, subhanAllah. If you sleep early, you wake up two, three hours before Fajr time. How much time to worship Allah in the solitude, in the quietness and the stillness of the night. But very few of us do it. Allah has given us short days in winter, but it becomes easy to fast. Very few of us do it. Because it is hard upon us. This mujahida, this striving is hard. But there is a very easy way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to connect ourselves with Allah. To make the ta'alluq, that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, quotes the words of shaitan when Allah tells shaitan to leave paradise. Then shaitan takes a vow and tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ثُمَّ لَا آتِيَنَّهُ مِن بَيْنِ أَيْدِهِمْ وَمِن خَلْفِهِمْ وَنْ عَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Allah, I will come to your servants from their front, from their back, from their right, from their left, and I will make most of them ungrateful to you. This is the weapon shaitan uses to make us ungrateful to the blessings and bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do we do to counter that weapon? Easy way for all of us to get closer to Allah. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Thank you Allah. All praises be to you, O Allah. I'm not worthy of these blessings, O Allah. There are many other community members who deserve these blessings, O Allah, but you have given it to me, O Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he would go to sleep in the night, he would say the words, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, zinata arshi, wa midada kalimati, wa adada khalqi, wa rida nafsi. All praises and thanks be to Allah. All praises and glory be to Allah. How much? As much as the weight of his throne. As much as the ink can write. As much as the number of creation. As much as it pleases you, O Allah. Allahumma laka alhamdu maliyan inda tarafata kulli aynin wa tanafusi nafsin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he'd go to sleep, he would say, O Allah, O Allah, I thank you for every blink of the eye. I thank you for every blink of the eye and every breath that is taken away. Only a prophet of Allah can make a dua like this. I thank you for every blink of the eye, O Allah, 
and every breath that is taken. We do not know how many creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that blink, that take breath. Allah says in the Quran, wa subhu idha tanafus, I swear by the morning as it breathes. Easy way to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, respected listeners. To thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To thank him for the time he has given us. A person will value the time. He will take advantage of the time when he knows that if I don't take value of this time, don't take advantage of this time, I, I'm being ungrateful to the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will lose the blessing what Allah has given me. Ni'matani maghboonun fihi ma kathirun min al-nas. As-sahtu wal-faraq. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, many people, many people are deceived or oblivious of these two great blessings Allah has given them. Good health and free time. Good health and free time. We, we, we realize the value of our health when it is gone. We realize the value of the time when it's gone. Look at us. White, white hair in my, on my beard. Where did all these years go? All of us are going to go through this, respected listeners. The youth is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I were to tell, if the youth would come back to me, I would tell the youth, what a wreck you have caused in my old age. What a wreck. What a havoc you have caused in the old age. Bones becoming weak. Eyesight becoming weak. Muscles becoming weak. Thinking ability becoming weak. ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and on that day, you will be asked about every blessing Allah has given you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after reciting these words from Al-Hakam al-Takathur surah at the end of the verse ثُمَّ لَتُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ يَذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah will ask you the first thing Allah will ask you on the day of judgment the cold water he gave you to drink the house as a shelter he gave you to live the woman you married whom other men wanted to marry but Allah gave her hand to you through her parents. Allah put it in the hearts of her parents to marry her to you. Allah will ask you about this on the day of judgment. Shibli Rahmatullah says, every breath a man takes, every breath a man takes, two thanks are due to Allah. If he breathes in, cannot breathe out, a person can die. He needs to thank Allah for that. If he breathes out, cannot breathe in, he can die. Another thanks is due to Allah. Oh Allah, how much, I can, how, can, how much can I thank you, oh Allah? Imam Shafi, rahmatullah, says, when thanking you deserves another thanks, another sugar for giving me the ability to thank you. Saying one alhamdulillah makes me thank you one more time to give me, for, for giving me the ability to say alhamdulillah one more time for giving me the ability to say alhamdulillah the first time, oh Allah. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person who says these words in the morning, it's as if she or he has thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the evening time. Allahumma ma azbah bi bin ni'matin aw bi ahadin min khalqik fa minka wahdak la sharika lak fa lak alhamd wa lak ashukr. Just say it in our own words, respected listeners. If you do not know the Arabic words, O oh Allah, all the good things are com that are coming to me this morning and to the entire creation are from you and you alone. There is no partner to you. Therefore, all praises and thanks be to you, O oh Allah. And if the evening time comes, change the words from Allahumma ma azbah bi to Allahumma ma amsa bi bin ni'matin aw bi ahdin min khalqik fa minka wahdak 
لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر او الله all the good things that are coming to me this evening and to the entire creation are from you and you alone there is no partner to you therefore all praises and thanks be to you o allah samurai ibn jundab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu one of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says i have heard this many times from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and i have heard these words many times from abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu and i have heard this many times from umar bin al khattab radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that whoever says these words in the morning and evening allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their duas their invocations their prayers just morning and evening and what are these words these words praise and glorify allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these words thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allahumma ta khalaqtani wa tahdini wa tut'imuni wa tasqini wa tuhyuni اللهم انت خلقتني وانت تهديني وانت تطعمني وانت تسقيني وانت تميتني وانت تحييني او الله يو ار ذا وان هو هاز كرييتد مي يو ار ذا وان هو جايدز مي يو ار ذا وان هو فيدز مي يو ار ذا وان هو جيفز مي واتر تو درينك يو ار ذا وان هو جيفز مي لايف اند يو ار ذا وان هو جيفز مي ديث اند يو ار ذا وان هو ميكس مي كم الايف ريزوركت مي وان مور تايم Abdullah ibn Salam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says Musa alayhi salam used to say this dua seven times seven times he repeat these words Allahumma anta khalaqtani wa anta tahdini wa anta tut'imuni wa anta tumituni wa anta tasqini wa anta tuhyini these words seven times he would make dua seven times with these words and Allah will accept his dua thanking Allah glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala respected listeners give us the ability to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala easy way for all of us people like us we are weak spiritually and physically we're not able to pray or long rakats of salat in the night time or wake up in the wee hours of the morning to pray extra optional salat to recite extra quran to fast in these short days but how do we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counter the weapon of the shaitan alhamdulillah all all praises and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala innahu kana abdan shakura Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about prophet nuh alayhi salam in the quran saying indeed he surely was a grateful thankful servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said regarding these words about nuh alayhi salam prophet nuh alayhi salam used to take one bite of morsel one bite of food thank allah whenever he would take a pint sip of water he would thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala among the 99 names of course allah has many more names ashkur ashkur the one the most appreciated No one can appreciate more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good we do. How much does Allah appreciate us? Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, you eat. You eat and thank Allah. Allah will give you the status as if you fasted and were patient for the sake of Allah. You eat and thank Allah. Allah will give you a reward as if you fasted and you were patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Allah becomes pleased Allah becomes pleased with a person who eats and thanks Allah who takes a bite and thanks Allah who drinks and thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So many blessings Allah has blessed us respected listeners every day if possible all of us should pray two rakat salatu shukr any time convenient to you pray to rakat salat wa shukr oh allah you're blessing me with so much i'm not worthy and deserving of these blessings oh allah still you're giving it to me to rakat salat because salat in the ruku and sujood bowing down prostration it contains all acts of worship because salat is such a worship 
such a powerful and great worship in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you go in sajda in prostration, your 30 trillion cells, the building blocks of the human body, submitting to the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every cell of those 30 trillion cells thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If not that, respected listeners, at least do a couple of prostrations, sajdas. Oh Allah, thank you for your blessings. La in shakartum la azi dannakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you're thankful to me, I will most definitely bless you with more. I will, I will most definitely bless you with more. Allah has given us ability to come and come to Juma Salah. Early, we thank Allah. Allah gives us the ability to come to another Salah. Any good we do, we thank Allah. Allah talks about Prophet Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam in the Quran. Allah, the more Allah gave them, Allah blessed them with a lot. The more Allah gave them, the more submissive they became to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more submissive they became to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to thank for the blessings and bounties of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us also among those who are submissive and obedient to, to appreciate the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akhuli khuli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfirullah fi Allah inal ghufur rahim. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah bil alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al kareem amma ba'd. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mallam yashkuri nas, lam yashkuri Allah. The one who hasn't thanked people for the favors they have done to him or her has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who does not thank people has not thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who appreciate and thank people for the favors they're doing to us. Our wives, respected listeners, taking care of the children, taking care of the house is not an easy task at all. It's a daunting task. If the same responsibilities were given to a man, a man will not be able to do as much as a woman does. We need to thank them for all they have done. Jazakumullah. Saying thank you is good, but we should create this environment in the homes. Jazakumullahu khairan. May Allah reward you. The wife thanking her husband. Jazakumullahu khairan. The children watching mom and dad. They're thanking each other, giving dua, prayers to each other. They grow up in that environment. They will continue that legacy of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings and bounties Allah has given us. No one remembered the favors of people more than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa In the aftermath of the Battle of Hunayn, tremendous amounts of spoils of war came to the Muslims. The enemies left everything behind. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mercy to the entire mankind. He waited seven days for those people to come back, repent, and take everything that belonged to them, but they never showed up. After waiting seven days, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started distributing the spoils of war, the booty of war. He started giving it to the newly con converts, the elite, and the celebrities of Makkah that came into the fold of Islam recently. Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, 100 camels, 40 awqiyas of gold. He said, what about my son Yazid, O Prophet of Allah? 100 camels for Yazid, 40 ounces of gold. He said, what about my other son Muawiyah, O Prophet of Allah? 100 camels from Muawiyah, 40 ounces of gold, awqiyas of gold. Hakim ibn Hizam, 100 camels. 40 ounces of gold. He said, O Prophet of Allah, can I have another 100 camels? 100 more camels for Hakim ibn Hizam. Harith ibn al Harith, 100 camels, 40 okhiyas of gold. People who fought on foot, 
so many camel and so many sheep. People who fought on horses, so many camels and so many sheep. The Ansar, the people of Medina, who helped Prophet وسلم, from the defeat into the victory in the Battle of Hunayn, they were all standing there, shocked and angry, saying, our swords are still wet with the blood. And we helped the Prophet of Allah in this battle to win. We're not getting anything from the Prophet of Allah. Because even to get a single date from the blessed hands of Prophet ﷺ was a benediction, was a blessing for any one of them. For all of them. But they were not getting anything from Prophet ﷺ. They were furious. They were talking amongst themselves. What is going on? We help the Prophet of Allah so much and we don't get nothing. We helped him win this battle, we don't get nothing. Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, one of the outspoken leaders of the Ansar, of the, of the people of Medina, went to Prophet ﷺ and said, O Prophet of Allah, the Ansar are furious. The people of Medina are furious, O Prophet of Allah. Because you're giving everything to them and not to, the, to us, to the Ansar. Prophet ﷺ said, what is your opinion? He said, my opinion is the same as the people of Medina, as the people of Ansar. Prophet ﷺ said, call them. All of them came with their faces down, faces angry, but faces down out of respect and awe. Prophet ﷺ said, why don't you speak? They said, Allah and his Prophet are far better and generous. He said, why don't you speak? Didn't I come to you at a time when you were astray and Allah guided you? Didn't I come to you at a time when you were poor and Allah ennobled you with his bounties? Didn't I come to you at a time when you were enemies unto one another and Allah joined your hearts? Oh people, say something. Everybody quiet. Allah and his prophet are far better and more generous. Then Prophet وسلم, said, O oh, people of Ansar, you can say the truth, you can speak the truth, and I will testify to your truth, to your statement. You can say, O oh, Prophet of Allah, when people called you a liar, we believed in you. When you were frustrated, we supported you. When you were poor, we gave you our money. When you were without shelter, we provided with you home. You could say that, oh people of Ansar, everybody quiet. Oh people of Ansar, what do you think? I gave these people worldly wealth so that their hearts can join to Islam. And I thought Islam was enough of a bounty for all of you. Oh people, what do you think? These people go with camels and sheep. You go with the Prophet of Allah to Medina. If I was not of the people of Makkah, I would rather be the pe people of Medina, people of Ansar. If people would take one way, and Ansar, people of Medina, would take another way, I would follow the way of the people of Medina, people of Ansar. May Allah bless Ansar. May Allah bless the children of Ansar. May Allah bless the children of the children of Ansar. When he said these words, the hearts of the Ansar, their faces were filled with tears, their beards became wet with the tears, and they said, the Prophet of Allah is enough for us. Imagine the Allah. Can you imagine, respected listeners, Rasulullah going with the Ansar to thank for their favors and living in Medina until he dies. On the day of resurrection, he will be raised from the blessed land of Medina. He remembered the favors, never forgot the favors of the people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us thank our family members, especially our wives, our children, the people who have done favors to us. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the ones whom you cannot repay back the favors they have done to you, make so much dua for them. Make so much, keep making so much dua for, for them that Allah fills your heart with contentment and satisfaction that you have repaid them back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are thankful to, 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 to the people who have done favors to you.